Okay, you guys, and here's what the shock shaft looks like once you pull it out of the housing. So you got the clevis, the bolts to your linkage. You got this cap that holds the spring. You've got your bumper, the dust cover, and this little part right here is what's called the seal head. There's a bushing inside there, and then there's a, an outer dust seal, just like the front forks, and then there's an internal seal. And you can replace all those, or you can replace the seal head itself. Sorry about that loud truck there. Uh, you can replace the seal head itself. Now, one of the things I'm gonna show you here, this is called the base plate, and this right here is called the piston ring, believe it or not, just like an engine. Uh, and then that whole center section, uh, the metal part, is what we call the piston. The shims on the top side here, I know it's hard to see, are the rebound shims and the shims on this bottom side here because when the shot goes up, oil is forced through, you guys see that? Oil is forced through these ports. There's three of them, four of them. One, two, three, four. Oil is forced through those ports and as it goes through the piston, it pushes against these shims right here. So to change your shimming or the valving, we simply change the thickness or the diameter of these shims to either increase stiffness or reduce stiffness. And that's all there is to valving. I mean, yeah, it's technical and it's complicated and you mess around a lot and have a lot of shim stacks you don't like till you finally get the one you do. But um, anyway, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to remove this. And um, this nut right here, you, I don't know if you can see very well, sorry, but this nut right here is bolted, it's, it's threaded in there and that bolts this whole thing together and holds this stuff on the shaft. And at the factory, they don't want that nut to come off, so what they do is they stake the end. And to stake means they use a tool to pound and flatten the metal over this nut so that it doesn't back off. So in order to get it off, what you have to do is file off that staking. And uh, I'm lazy, I usually use my grinder, and I just simply grind the edge of that, uh, the nut and the staking kind of on an angle, probably about a 30 degree angle around that whole thing to uh, eventually remove that nut. I'm gonna get out my little hand grinder because I'm lazy and I'm gonna grind that staking off then I'll take the nut off. Uh, and it takes some work by the way, but make sure you get all the staking off. Uh, there's certain years of bikes, however, that have a check valve in here. And on those, make sure you don't grind off where that check valve is. You have to go on a steeper angle, about 45 degrees. Um, I can't remember the years now off the top of my head, but certain Hondas have that show a show a primarily suspension or show a shocks. So anyway, I'm gonna do that and be back with you in a minute. see that but that's basically what it looks like a little warm but all the staking is ground off and it's ready to start working off the nut
Okay, folks, uh, here's going to be a brief, very brief summary on how shims go. Now, the stock piston is right here. What I want to show you, if you can see, um, that's probably better. It's really hard to see with this camera. Well, probably any camera, but these ports where the where the uh, oil goes through has a big flat shelf on each one of these ports. Now that flat shelf creates turbulence and harshness with the oil flow. So the, one of the values of a gold valve, I don't know if you can see, but the, the holes where the oil goes through is very chamfered. I don't know if you can barely see that or not, but it's chamfered so that the oil directs through those ports easier and that's one of the ways that gold valves help reduce harshness so now the other thing is you can see all these shims laying out here and uh, they are in order of the way they're going to go back onto the shock and what I want to show you is that this gold valve underneath it as it goes onto this shaft so starting from the bottom working up starts with smaller shims it gets bigger as you go up that starts with high speed compression, then low speed compression, then the piston, then low speed rebound, and high speed rebound. Now, down here you'll see we've got tapered shims. There's a small shim here, and then there's tapered ones getting smaller as you go. This is the high speed compression stack, and we'll go on that shaft first. Now, the high speed compression has a lot to do with hitting square edge bumps, fast shock speed, so anything that's abrupt and quick. I usually like to make this stack a little bit thinner shims, um, not as many, to make it a little bit more compliant there. Then there's a crossover here, and uh, it's complicated. I'm, not, I'm gonna not even tackle that one with this video. But then you've got all these shims that are all look like they're the same size, and they are. This part is the low speed compression, and the, the shims that you put in here will affect hitting the faces of jumps, landing on landings, going through berms, keeping up in the stroke when you hit obstacles. And so I like the low speed compression to be slightly stiffer or slightly more firm. So I've used more of a, of a desert type setup for the low speed compression and more of a trails type setup for high speed compression. When I put that all together, it'll make the, hopefully make the shock feel fairly plush, but still have some good bottoming resistance. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting that on the shock shaft over here, and then I'll start working on the rebound stack. Okay, everybody, uh, the new valve stack and the gold valve is installed on the shaft. The shaft, I want you to see if I can do this without messing stuff up too much. Now, the bottom of this gold valve, these first several thick shims, is low speed compression. The tapered ones, you can see if you look down how they taper as they go down, that's high speed compression. You have the valve, and then all these thick ones on the first set of thick ones is low speed rebound. And then the tapered ones above that is high speed rebound. And then we've just got spacers, and then the, the nut, which is loctited and bolted down to 25 foot pounds. So that assembly is back together. The gold valve actually uses a little O-ring here, and then it's got this little deal right here, which is the actual, oh boy, now I'm having a hard time focusing. Back up here, camera, there you go. This goes around the, the valve. Boy, it's having a hard time. Anyway, that goes around like this, and then it goes inside of the shock body, there we go. 